If you think architectural renders are hard work and take a lot of time, I'm about to change your mind. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little minute since I've talked to you in front of this camera, so I wanna take the opportunity just to say welcome to all the new subscribers because today we're diving in to ARCHICAD 25 and Twinmotion exactly how you can take a render and produce high quality architectural renders. So now I'm gonna turn around, start the actual timer down below and we are gonna get started with this tutorial. All right, so as hardworking David over there works to show you exactly what you need to do to be able to produce a quality 3D render using any ARCHICAD model that you have available to you. Basically, I'm just gonna talk you through exactly what's happening on that screen over there as I, or him, basically does all the work and you can sit back and enjoy this quick tutorial. So once you have Twinmotion open, what you're really looking to do is understand the site, the sun, the layout, and the positioning. Now the key difference between any architectural render and any basic boring render is very simple. It's the keen eye of a photographer. So when you're actually creating your 3D model and you're creating your photo renders, you want to be looking for that photographic quality. If you're unsure what a good photographic scene looks like, take a look at inspirational pictures, look at the angles that they're looking at, look for the different portions, look at the grid lines and set it up so you know exactly what you're doing before you start creating anything. So once you have the photo set up in twin motion and you've saved that first view, there's a couple of things you wanna do. First of all, you wanna make sure that your settings are correct. I'm gonna be posting this to Instagram, so I'm gonna to want to be able to post it as an Instagram format. Instagram is 4x5, which makes it relatively easy. For me personally, I export all my photos 4000 by 5000 pixels because it gives me enough leverage and enough pixel density to edit that later in Lightroom. If you don't have that much computing power and your computer can't handle it, drop it down to 2000 by 2500 and you'll still get Instagram ready shots directly out of twin motion. Now continuing on with the photographer theme, you wanna make sure that your camera settings are set up correctly. Camera settings are actually pivotal here because it defines what the actual eye can see. So by default, twin motion is set up to a 90 degree field of vision, which is very close to the human eye. However, in photography, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be a pretty picture. For us, it wants to be anywhere below 60, somewhere near that 40 to 60 range. Usually I like to compress it down to about a 50 millimeter lens because it gives you a nice depth of field and you're able to create as much photographic realism in 50 degree field of view. If you wanna take it to the next step, you really wanna be looking for better plants and better people and better cars. So you can definitely buy some better plants online. Twin Motion does not handle plants very well. It crashes pretty quickly. So I tend to try and avoid any 3D external plants. However, I do import most of my other external objects. Cars especially are critical. People will look at a render and go, oh my God, there's a Tesla, that's a great render. I'm gonna like that image. Or, oh my God, there's a Porsche there. Great, I love that image. By the time they actually see it on Instagram or on TikTok, it's long gone because they're not looking at the finer details. If you're doing a professional render, obviously you take a bit more time, but for Instagram and for any social media platform, find the right car, find something trending included in. If you're doing an office render, include a brand new iMac, include something from Apple or make it relatable to anybody in the world. You wanna make sure that the background and the foreground are as realistic as possible. So personally, what I like to do is actually enhance the road as much as possible using a series of materials to be able to bring that road perfectly in line with what I'd like it to be. Then introducing individual curbing elements through the bridged items and introducing elements like footpaths, sidewalks, actual painted on grass, so 3D grass, plants and objects the like. What really sets it apart is the objects you use. So the plants in Twin Motion are half decent and most of the time you can get away with using just them. After the settings, it is really about the materials you select and how you go about them. Right now, Twin Motion has a series of faults that are really annoying, so sometimes you have to scale up individual accesses rather than scaling the whole material itself because you might place on a timber material, for example, and it might be completely warped. So don't go running away from that material straight away and instead actually try to adjust those axes to be able to produce the best quality render. The one thing lacking in Twin Motion is the glass and the quality of the reflection still. Most of the time, if you do have a powerful machine, then ray tracing will definitely help with the glass material as well. 
Twinmotion has a variety of materials that you can directly import through the bridge or through Twinmotion itself, or you can import new materials yourself, all of which are critical to making a good photographic realistic render at the end of the day. And last but not least, the only advice I can give is pay attention to the details. Anything that you model in Archicad, make sure that you simply pay attention to those details because the details make the render so much better. If it isn't for the details, they're gonna pick up on a very basic white wall. It's gonna look very boring and very bland and like everybody else's. So if you basically take all of these tips that I've given you today and translate them to any rendering software, any program, you're gonna be able to basically create some of the best renders you've ever done in your life so far. And if you really want to take it to that next level, once you've exported it out of Twinmotion, you want to take it into Lightroom or any photo editing app. Personally, I use Lightroom. I'm an Adobe guy. I've used it for a long time, so I know how to edit on it very quickly. I also have my own presets, which are available down below if you want to take a look. But basically, I'll throw them into Lightroom and slowly adjust all the elements to make that render really, really pop because the render quality that you get out of Twinmotion is good, but the second it comes out of Lightroom with a few adjustments, it's 100 million times better. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know the drill. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and as always, I'll see you next Monday.